uh, Vijay Kumar. I'm uh, uh, the Associate Dean for uh, Open Learning at uh, MIT uh, in Cambridge and uh, also uh, uh, privileged to be the Executive Director of the Jamil World Education Lab, JWEL, uh, which really uh, focuses on sparking an educational renaissance around the world. So the, the lab has been operational now for a little more than two years, two and a half years, almost three years. And uh, what it does is try to bring uh, MIT's educational innovation practice, research, and convene uh, a, a community of collaborators, our members, to work with them uh, to co-design solutions for educational transformation. Address, you know, and it does it across pre-K through 12 education, higher education, and for workforce learning, looking at these as an integrated flow. I've been at MIT for 23, more than, a little more than 23 years, largely working with education technology and education innovation and open learning. Oh yes, no, OCW, I was uh, uh, intimately involved in its launch. Uh, in fact, even before it became an organization, it came out of uh, a council on educational technology that we had and with a small group of us uh, who uh, helped conceive of the idea. And uh, uh, I, I should say with some trepidation, when, you know, took it to our president and provost who, uh, who wonderfully stood, supported the idea because it was uh, in some sense uh, a bold step in, in uh, intellectual educational philanthropy, you know, saying we have to, and, and we do this, it's an extension of stuff that MIT does about uh, uh, promoting, influencing good practice uh, around the world for education. And this allowed us to really uh, do that in a, an extensive manner, you know, saying uh, not to tell the world how to teach or learn, but to say here is what we do Uh, Michael's uh, uh, both uh, passion, propensity to support open education, I'm personally aware of, you know, having uh, seen uh, uh, both Sailor Academy and the kinds of, you know, both the resources he was applying and his own personal time and effort and resources towards advancing the intent of making uh, education, educational resources openly available. And also, uh, and it's very much connected to the global skills gap, how do you enable capabilities and capacity around the world you know, to participate much more acutely, productively in the global economy, you know? I mean, uh, ever since I uh, came in touch with him, he's an MIT alum, you know, and uh, we've seen this. You know, and uh, the global skills gap, and this has been the conversation yesterday, today, uh, and uh, when I think about the gap, you know, uh, and it's, it is quite a pronounced gap, and perhaps it always existed. Now, you know, there's a lot of light shining on it, saying that there is a gap. And uh, uh, on, on the one hand, the skills gap is uh, uh, much more pronounced now because uh, everything around us is being transformed because of the increasing centrality of technology and digital. You know? And uh, uh, today in my talk, I was remarking uh, this wonderful statement that I heard from Michael two, two presentations, two sessions ago, you know, uh, when he gave the example of us learning geography and saying, look, when we learned geography, it was an atlas, you know, and, and some maps and which became a, a million images on Google Earth, you know, and now it's an intelligent uh, service, a GPS service on your watch, you know. So every hard product is, becoming an intelligent soft service. And what are the implications for the competencies that people need to have to both create that tra transition, respond to the transition, then also be able to take advantage of that shift, you know, to do better things or to be productive uh, in our economy. So the skills gap in some sense is uh, because of the centrality of these uh, of technology that's certainly one thing but it's also because you know everything around us is, uh, is suddenly we're also conscious that people are displaced 
displaced from educational opportunity either because of social political crises or because uh, they're in jobs where the jobs are changing and they need careers, they need advice, right? They, uh, uh, they uh, need to upskill. So the skills, and, and then also because a lot of people are just not participating in learning opportunities, which even eliminates their participation in the economy, you know, right? So it's not just about upskilling, you know, they don't get there. So the skills gap uh, is uh, increasingly pronounced and not just because of these influences like technology and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, global factors, you know, other social, socioeconomic factors, uh, but also we are becoming conscious of the fact that our current institutions and modalities have left a lot of people underserved, unserved, and therefore excluded them in the skills economy. So that's, a, and I think we have the opportunity now, you know, to, uh, and we've always had the opportunity again now uh, in more interesting ways, you know, to be able to leverage what we have learned, what we're learning about uh, uh, technology, which, whether it is mobile technology, what we're learning about learning itself from brain science, cognitive science, to be much more inclusiveness, to be able to address the skills gap. You know. The one thing I will add, the skills gap is not a, a thing that you get to and you have arrived. You know, it, uh, you know the, the gap is because things are constantly changing. So you, this is moving, you need this to move also, meaning the preparation, the capacity building uh, is an ongoing process and that's and uh, so uh, which is not just about being op providing access openly but to being open to change in what you provide access to you know into the quality of the learning experiences what kinds of things are you open to